Hi and uh, welcome to GPCA TV and the 14th annual GPCA Forum. My name is Mark Thomas, I'm the markets editor for Chemical Wheat magazine which is owned by IHS Market. I'm joined today by Wim Rolls who's the chief executive officer of Baruge's marketing and sales division. Wim, welcome. Could you tell me a little bit about Baruge's corporate social responsibility initiatives and how they help ensure the sustainability of the company? I mean, uh, our corporate social responsibility activities are, uh, we have a number of them, uh, but they're all kind of linked to the core activities of the company. Uh, probably the oldest one and best established one is Water for the World where we are together with uh, local NGOs, uh, with some of our industry partners, provide uh, drinking water solutions or sanitation solutions to uh, villages or uh, locations in, in countries which can't afford or which do not have the facilities, not have the ability. So that's what we have been doing for, for more than 10 years. Uh, we have had a, a great outreach. We have reached many people, uh, hundreds of thousands of people by that. Uh, so that, that's kind of been the, the cornerstone of our uh, corporate social responsibility. But we have also lately been more active in, in promoting the use of plastics, uh, bringing uh, children closer to chemical industry, closer to the world of plastics, to also show them what plastic brings to society. Not that plastics is, is ending up in waste and the waste problem, which they see all the time, but uh, the possibilities plastics have in making uh, modern life possible. So that, that's kind of the two main areas where we have been focusing on. And I would say the latter area uh, is growing fast and we start to uh, implement it uh, very much here in UE, but also in uh, other facilities in, in, in Singapore, uh, uh, India, China. I say that's a very uh, long-term process. You must approach it all the time with very much the, the long-term in mind. Is that the case? That's the case, and that's what we believe in. I mean, at the end, we are in this industry for the long run. Uh, these kind of social challenges are challenges that are not going to be solved in one year. Same with water for the world. Uh, our program does not solve all the water problems in the world nor does it solve all the sanitation problems in the world. But it does matter for the people that have a solution. And it shows what is possible, very often with really little money, but just with the knowledge, the capability, the willingness from the local community, uh, the companies involved to do something to make it happen. And we believe it's the same with uh, educating and making children more aware of the benefits of plastics. Also the benefits and the possibilities of the chemical industry. Uh, we believe that over term, over a longer term, over years, this will contribute to, to a better image. Uh, it, has a, it has a second dimension, which is, uh, if you look at the chemical industry, we see less and less students studying chemistry, studying chemical engineering. Uh, and we need these people long term for our operations, uh, be it here in UE or overseas, uh, so also attracting young people to the chemical industry, to study chemistry, to study engineering, is an important element of that, uh, that program. Uh, as a company, we are committed to grow. We are committed to uh, grow with our customers, with the market. And uh, for that, we keep on investing. Uh, we are at the moment uh, in the middle of uh, the investment for our new PP plant, which is under construction in Ruiz, which will add half a million ton of uh, PP capacity by 2021. Uh, we are also in the, the middle of the feed phase for our next uh, big cracker complex. Uh, and, and we hope that that will also proceed and will significantly add our capacity a few years later. So as such, uh, we are committed to grow and to keep on supplying the differentiated products uh, to our customers and grow with them uh, in our markets. It's also the case, I think, that Baruch has very much sort of looked to expand globally 
uh, and also um, that affects what markets it looks at. So could you tell us a little bit about the markets that the company is looking to grow into and grow further into? I mean, traditionally, Baruch has been mainly focusing on the Middle East and, and Asia, and, and that is still uh, uh, predominantly our focus area. But of course, within this within this region, uh, new countries have emerged, new countries uh, which are growing fast, uh, and that is in Asia. You talk about uh, some of the Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam, which is growing very fast at the moment, Myanmar, which is opening up, where business is developing. Uh, we are putting uh, quite a lot of efforts here in the Middle East, looking at uh, Africa, North Africa, Egypt, uh, East Africa, uh, which are countries uh, with a lot of potential, uh, large populations, uh, and, and a growing economy, steady growing. It's not exploding, but it's growing uh, with uh, solid growth figures over the years. And uh, they are creating new opportunities for, for us and for our industry. Okay. Uh, just lastly, would you be able to perhaps talk about, I guess, one or two of the headwinds which are out there in the industry at present in terms of what you're trying to do? Um, so. Obviously, we have uh, trade disputes and the economy generally. Um, could you just give a, a quick thought on how the current headwinds that you see the industry facing? I mean, probably the biggest challenge for our industry is the plastic waste, uh, which is a clear uh, and, a, and a massive issue that needs to be resolved. And as a company, we are committed to contribute and, and work together with the value chain and with the different industry partners in finding solutions. Uh, at the end, plastics make a significant contribution to society and that's what should be the main the main thing of plastics it should not become a problem uh, plastic should not be thrown away it is a valuable product so it can be recycled it can be reused it can be uh, in the kind of last step it can be burned for uh, energy recuperation but that has to be resolved and that is mainly in, in asian countries in africa where waste collection is not in place uh, so there as a company we are engaged in a called project called STOP. Together with Polaris, uh, it's uh, organized by Systemic, uh, the company who is doing it. Uh, companies like Nova, Norwegian government, Nestle are all part of this. And, and we want to demonstrate that it is possible to build a waste collection system. A waste collection system that is self-supporting, uh, self-sufficient, uh, that collects the different waste streams, and then also kind of doesn't recycle, but sells the material for recycling the plastic, the paper, the organic waste. Uh, the project has been shown to be very successful and uh, has really demonstrated that it's possible to do that. Uh, it has found uh, new uh, projects. I mean, a new project will be started in, in Bali, uh, supported by the, uh, the Global Alliance Against Plastic Waste. There are some other projects under discussion in other parts of the world. So it starts to get momentum in addressing the waste problem. Uh, a second challenge, which, we ha which I see is very much the economical situation at the moment, uh, the trade disputes, the trade war between uh, US and China, uh, which has at the end resulted in, in a more or less in the meantime global economical slowdown. And, and, and that is, I believe, fundamentally free trade contributes to economical growth. And needs to be, there need to be common rules, there need to be clarity, uh, but trading across nations, across countries, uh, allows companies to secure their competitive, uh, secure that the best solution is being offered. And uh, with all the present challenges, that is being under question or is being threatened. And, and at the moment, uh, we, we see that demand is relatively weak, mainly driven by kind of a global uncertainty on what the future will bring. So, so that's kind of the two big challenges we see in the industry. Uh, and, and we will have to address both uh, in one way or another. Uh, I think for the recycling or for the waste, we are building the circular economy concept where we investing not only in what I just explained to solve the waste problem, but also in innovation, driving uh, new packaging concepts together with brand owners, with different uh, partners in the value chain. Packaging concepts that are much easier to recycle, monomaterial solutions. Concepts for reuse, reusable packaging. Uh, 
We're also looking at recycling, how to bring recycling in that whole stream, how, make recy how, how to make recycling a part of the, the total solution. Uh, so this is the different areas we're working to address that challenge we see of, of, of uh, plastic waste and, and the uh, challenge there is around the whole CO2 emissions, use of natural resources. When it comes to the uh, trade challenge, I believe, and we have as a company always been committed to uh, differentiated products at scale, which means products that are technologically advanced, that high demand, uh, very often linked to uh, specifications and long-term uh, performance guarantees. Uh, we believe that's also uh, a way we as a company can, can manage the trade disputes because these kind of products are not readily available everywhere. So it will allow us also to, to keep on selling these products even uh, if in some places uh, trade barriers are being uh, created. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us today.